Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Last time, we got ready for the museum party, and now we are in Act 2, Suspects on Parade. So let's go in, and uh, who's, who's this imposing fellow here? There is here? a tall, imposing gentleman <laughs> guarding the door. He appears to be wearing a German military uniform. I didn't realize they actually described him as imposing. That was completely coincidental. Anyway. This affair is by invitation only, Fraulein. Your papers, please. I'm going to guess that this is Wolf Heimlich. I am sorry, but I have no time to talk, Fraulein. I am the chief of security, you understand. I have much responsibility. So yes, we have more stereotypes. Anyway, I guess we show more press pass. Danke, Fraulein. I'll return this pass when you are leaving. Enjoy yourself this evening. Basically, that just gets rid of it for us, because we don't need it anymore. Ah, uh, you recognize that tune, don't you? Yes, we'll be getting plenty of those. And here we are. This is the museum, and, uh... Act 2 is pretty much going to be almost all in this room. There's this, and then to the left, and then to the right. And we're going to be meeting a lot of new characters. So we recognize Ziggy here. And I believe that this is, uh, uh, Pippin Carter, and then we have Archibald Carrington, but we have two other people here that I don't quite recognize. Let's start talking. So yes, there's going to be a lot of conversation in this act. We're almost, like, about 90% of the conversations happen in this act, and then after that it's mostly just, uh, Heard any good rumors lately? Mystery and puzzle solving. Maybe, or maybe not. What's it worth to you? Well, I don't have any money right now. Then I ain't got no rumors for you, Tuts. Ah. Uh, but we can still talk to him. Even though we already had a full conversation with him before, he'll have different things to say now that he's uh, here. What is he doing here, anyway? I, ne I never know what he's actually doing here. I started uh, asking him about people. Augustini. Uh, Augustini, yeah, that name rings a bell. Oh yeah, uh, be he the concierge at the plaza? No. The new museum press? Stodgy old guy, but a fine chap. Yeah, that's it, a fine chap. Good man. Alright, I guess you have a, a high opinion of him. I'll tell ya, most of the cops around these towns stink. But alright, this chief and he, he sees okay. He really knows how to treat a mouthpiece, you know? Huh. I made some good jack working for him. I guess that's good for you. You've met Rube Crodfaller, haven't you? Certainly I have. Definitely one of the most up and up guys I know. Keeps his nose clean, but knows how to have a good time. <laughs> so he's basically the, uh... Only one who uh, has, has actually heard of uh, Crotfaller. No, he ain't in my privileged circle of friends and acquaintances. Okay. Keep that one in, because that was kind of a silly response. Isn't that what they named the stiffs when they don't have an ID? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I simply have to say that your pronunciation is dreadful. Hey, that's an insult, right? <laughs> oh, this guy. Alright. I'll ask him about himself. What's up with this Ziggy Joker? <laughs> hey, watch your mouth. You're talking to him. That'd be awkward. Have you ever done that, folks? I've talked about somebody when they're, like, right behind me, but I've never actually said something to their face, no, not knowing that that's the person. That lady's scary. I've been avoiding her. Okay, yeah, we'll meet her in a bit. Pretty much all the people we've been hearing about are now in this room. Nice working girl. I, I knew her when. Now, well... Now she's a big hotshot museum, what do you call it? Back then, she was a, a, a streetwalker, if you catch my drift. <laughs> oh, really? So, Yvette is the... I don't know if this has been said yet, but I'll just say she's the secretary. I don't think that's ever, like, 
explicitly said, but she's the secretary to the president of the museum. Yeah, the dock worker. Yeah. I know that guy. He ain't in my inner circle, though. Don't know much about the Joe. Well, he's back with the dog, so we probably don't have to worry much about him anymore. So the Countess. What makes you think I know anything about a dame like her? She's... she won't even have anything to do with me. I... I mean, I... I don't know anything about her. Now, why ask me? That's odd. Huh. She seems to know you. Even though we haven't spoken to her she yet. She did. What did she say? It ain't true. Listen. That old cow couldn't keep a secret if her life depended on it. I ain't taking the rap for her anyways. Man, what is... Now leave me alone before I cause the cops. Or somebody. <laughs> He's really touchy about that subject about the Countess. I wonder what Questions that's about. Are a bit... uh, yeah, sometimes I'll click on the wrong place, because you got to click on just the right person. Yeah, he seems really suspicious, and I'm not sure if she was saying that was like a mistake, saying she knows something about you, or if Laura was just sort of trying to wheedle information of, out of him by like lying, or I don't know. Quiet guy most of the time. Accountant, I think. Boy, I'll tell you, those Egyptians know some crummy jokes. <laughs> they're not jokes, they're riddles. Silly man. You mean the newspaper? Not me, sister. I prefer my news straight from the horse's patootie if you catch my drift. <laughs> that's not that's not that's not the saying, dude. Have you had any contact with the police? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. I'm sort of a, a a freelance detective. I find things out that the police can't, then I pass along the information. Her price. Sounds like a most valuable service. We already knew that about Oh, him. yeah. They couldn't do their jobs right without me. Nice guys, them cops. Kiss me flush. Salts of the earth. Laundry. Laundry. Oh, you mean like washing her clothes. <laughs> oh, no, my gosh. I does that myself. I I'm sure you do. Or maybe you don't. Who knows? You're familiar with the 12th Street Docks, aren't you? Not me, lady. Mostly your unsavory types hang out down there. And I'm sure you're not one of those, are you? I know everything's not what it looks to be, but then what is? Same with all these mocky mucks. Look, appearances can be deceiving. Me? Do, do I look like the brother of a famous Broadway producer? No! But I am! Probably not. What did that have to do with the museum, anyway? I guess he's saying that the museum isn't what it says is, what it looks like it is? I don't know. Who knows? You know, you know some days it's a rich spelting pot, but some days it's a big cesspool. But you know, you gotta rise to the top. Like scum! And keep your feet and your nose clean. That's how I does it anyway. You seen it? I saw you in there before. It is what it is. Hey, I'm a philosopher. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I think I'm going to, like, because these conversations are going to take some time, I'll probably do some, like, skipping around, cutting out, like, uh, opening the book and turning the pages and stuff, and... Stuff like that. So if you see me skipping around, of course, you know what that means. And I'm not going to ask them about things. That's useless. How was your year, Mr. Ziggy? Sepoib. Simply sepoib. First I mix a sawbuck on the Tunny Dempsey match. Now here I am rubbing elbow grease with a hoity-toity. Thanks for asking. about the burglary. That's important. I know the dagger was heisted. I might even know who done it. But I ain't talking. Huh. If you know, why won't you go to the police? Isn't that your job, bro? All I got is a suspicion. I got nothing hard. Uh. Besides, what have the cops done for me lately? This is in the interests of justice. Who are you trying to protect? I'm trying to protect me. Now flip! 
gosh. Anything about Egyptology? Tell me about Egyptology. We talked about that before, remember? I told you that crazy Egyptian riddle that Ramses guys passed along. Yeah, remember that riddle, folks. Now let's take a look at this fellow. Dr. Pippin Carter is a tall, dignified, middle-aged gentleman with a carefully trimmed moustache. Now what, what I'm really supposed to do right here to progress is I walk behind them and I listen in on their conversation. And I do that with several groups, but uh, once I do that then they'll sort of scatter and I'd prefer to do this while they're in a big group to get a lot of them out of the way now. And Yes, this is probably going to be split up quite a bit, but that's fine. I have to split this up into a few episodes. This is quite a party. Does a museum always have a big fundraiser when they open a new exhibit, Dr. Carter? No, but they've never had such an important exhibit opening here before. And I'm an important curator with an important salary, so the museum wouldn't have been able to keep me employed here without financial assistance. Wow. You must be very important for the museum to go to so much trouble. Naturally. The museum is lucky that I accepted this position as the head of their new Egyptian Antiquities Department. Why, my name alone will attract more visitors and more money to the museum. Any chance that the Tut Uncommon exhibit will make a stop here on its American tour? No. I'd hate to embarrass my relative by putting his Tutankhamun artifacts on display here. What? They pale by comparison to my own great discoveries, such as the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Of course. How silly of me to think otherwise. Yes, that was rather silly of you. You know what? I, I don't really like this guy. But oh well. Let's ask him stuff. I believe he was the Emperor of Rome just after Justinian. You're thinking of, of Augustus, dude. If you're so, so smart, you should have known that. That's me, you silly girl. If you want to arrange an in-depth interview, we'll have to schedule it later in the week. Uh, I doubt that's going to happen. Dr. Carrington is a fine chap. He used to be in charge of the British Museum, you know. I ran into him several years ago when I visited the British Museum to consult with Dr. Butch. Seems odd that Dr. Carrington doesn't remember me, but I almost didn't recognize him either. He's getting old after all. Looks different. Memory's probably shot as well. That's too bad he doesn't remember you. He's probably gained some weight it looks different. Huh. Ah, uh, yes. Can't say I'm too impressed with Detective O'Reilly. Couldn't find a single bloody clue about the Durga burglary. And he has the nasty habit of chewing on grapes constantly. Probably to cover up the smell of the alcohol he drinks. Oh, really? Yeah, I remember he mentioned something about... He was complaining about how their price of grapes went up or something like that. I forgot what he was complaining about before. He likes his grapes. A crowd follow is some sort of miniature vegetable, isn't it? A potato, perhaps. I know it's some sort of food. He runs one of the local Chinese laundries. Pretends to be Chinese so he can get more business, but he has a terrible accent. <laughs> I, I figured you'd be a too high class to know anything about a Chinese laundry. Rather an unfortunate name, I think. <laughs> That's what I say. Dr. Miklos is rather eccentric, but she is well educated. Received her training at one of the Peta universities in Athens, Greece. She's considered quite knowledgeable in the area of hieroglyphics, but her speciality is paleontology. She's fond of old bones. Ah, so Adam P. Miklos, in charge of paleontology, likes bones. And I actually, she's actually a pretty cool character. I like her, but won't be her in a bit. 
to bed. That trollop sleeps with everything that moves, and some things that don't. Ew. It's only by sheer strength of will that I've resisted her advances so far. I'm sure. And probably fear of disease. Ah, oh, yes. I'm Lex, the security chief here. Not a particularly good one, obviously, since the dagger was stolen right from under his nose. And he's rather too intense for my tastes. <laughs> he's an intense fellow, I'll give you that. Steve Dorian. The Stevedore with a ridiculous name. <laughs> He's the fellow who helped unload my artifacts from the steamship. If it weren't for his odd name, I would have forgotten him entirely. Ah, uh, you. I'm surprised you even knew his name in the first place. The Countess was married to the former president of the Lion Decker Museum, Sterling really? Waldorf Carlton. A good chap, but uninspired. Now she has a sight set on Dr. Carrington. So that's another interesting thing. The Countess was married to the previous president of the museum, but he passed away, and now she's here, and it seems like she's trying to make the moves on um, the current president, Dr. Um, Archibald Carrington, or maybe something else. Who knows? Of course I know Ramses. There were several of them, actually. Ramses I was pharaoh during the 19th dynasty from 1307 to 1306 BC. Oh, that's interesting. But Ramses but I... II made more of an impact on ancient Egypt. It's not, not... From 1290 to 1224 what... BC, Ramses about... II undertook a succession of it's, gargantuan it's construction guy. projects, which She's left his listening. mark in the face of Egypt for thousands of years. His mortuary yeah, site yeah. at Thebes, the Ramesseum, contains a temple to Amun-Ra, a royal palace, a mortuary temple, and several storerooms. Actually, I was referring to Ramses Niger. Never heard of him. Oh, well, you could have just said that. But that was some interesting information, I must say. It's one of those local scandal periodicals. The term yellow journalism comes to mind when I think of it, which means it's not much of a newspaper at all, really. Hey! It's more like printed chewing gum for the uneducated masses. Now, wait a minute. The Tribune is a fine newspaper of the highest quality. I know because I happen to work there. You've just proven my point. Well, I never. Maybe that's your problem. I don't have to stand here and take this abuse. You're right, you don't. You could just go away and make us both happy. This guy's a jerk. <laughs> the police station is the last refuge for the incompetence in this city. However, if you're looking for a constable, I'd suggest one of the donut shops. Dodgy British jerk. People tell me Low Fats is a good place to have laundry done, but he always puts too much starch in my shirts. Why would you even go to a laundry place like that? That's why I arrived on the steamship, Andrea Doria. I came over with the artifacts for the Egyptian exhibit. Apparently Dr. Carrington was also on that voyage from England, but I never ran into him aboard ship. Keeps to himself a lot, you know. Uh, so you only ran him into him after the fact. Hmm. With a little work, I can turn the Lion Decker into a world-class museum. But that can wait a few months until they decide to make me the president. Dr. Carrington will have to find other employment, of course, but I'm sure some lesser museum would be happy to have him on their staff. You realize he's standing right there. Since you're new here, what do you think of New York? Isn't it exciting? 
I hate it. It's crowded, it's noisy, and you Americans have no concept of how the class system is supposed to work. You go around treating each other like equals, which I find very distasteful. Shit, <laughs> this guy. Uh, yeah, all that equality crap. What a, what a joke, right? If you're referring to the local drinking establishments, they are quite illegal, and I don't condone their existence. I do drink on occasion, but only when the finest wines are available. Would you say this has been a good year for you, sir? Well, let's see. I made the most important archaeological discovery of all time. Almost all time, everyone really? on the planet knows my name, and I've clinched a curatorial job I've been after for years. Yes, I'd say it has been a rather good year. Hmm. Seems to me you might have a problem. A problem? Such as? Well, you've accomplished so much this year. What are you gonna do next? Aha! Uh -huh. Next? What next? Don't bother me with such ludicrous questions, you silly female. She makes a good point. You must be very upset about the burglary. Quite so. If I ever find out who stole my dagger of Amon Ra, they won't live to regret it, I can assure you. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Do you have any idea who would do such a thing? I have my suspicions, but I need more proof before I subject him to the full force of my wrath. Have the police learned anything? Those incompetence? Hardly. They couldn't even find any clues around the dagger display. Sounds like the burglar might have been a professional. Very true. Perhaps. It's more likely the local constable couldn't find a clue if it jumped up and bit him on the bum. <laughs> so he suspects someone, suspects it's a him, and uh, pretty much threatened to kill the person. Since you're an expert on the subject, what can you tell me about Egyptology? I don't have time to explain the intricacies of my profession to a neophyte. If you're truly interested, I'd suggest several years of difficult study on the subject at one of your better universities. Once you've finished that, you can talk to me again. <sighs> well, we're done talking with that guy, that's good. And before I end it off, I want to introduce you to Yvette Delacroix. Delacroix, how are you pronounce it? Bonjour, Miss Bo. Dr. Carrington told me you were covering this party for the newspaper. I'm Yvette Delacroix. So it is Qua. That's right. right, Miss Delacroix. I'm writing the social news column. Ah, the social news. I was thinking you were here about the burglary. The burglary? <laughs> oh, yeah, she has not. to uh, the pretend. The newspaper would never assign a female cub reporter like myself to such an important story. Ah, uh, you are probably being correct, Miss Bo. So if you thought uh, Fifi was bad, you just wait, oh man. But we'll end it off here, and next time we'll have a few more conversations. I expect perhaps in th I'll have all these finished, and then we'll do some uh, eavesdropping. And then we can explore more of the, the museum finally. So, I'll see you all next time. Have a good day.